All right, in this lecture, we're gonna be talking about adjustment settings. So I have this painting here that I've done, it's already finished, but we're gonna use our adjustment settings menu to mess with it and see what we can do using those settings. So if we come up here, we're gonna click on this little icon that looks like a wand in the top left. If you're in Photoshop, you're just gonna to go to your adjustments menu, okay? So we're going to ignore this top section, okay? Those are gonna be in another lecture where we'll talk about blurs and the smudge tool and stuff like that. But we are going to go down here to the second menu, which has hue, saturation, brightness, color balance, curves, recolor, stuff like that, okay? So hue, saturation, and brightness, that's the first one we're gonna select. So it brings up these three sliders at the bottom of the screen, okay? Hue, it's going to do what it sounds like. It's gonna adjust the hue range of our entire image, okay? So everything is gonna be moved along that scale. If we move it more towards blue, everything is going to be shifted along the blue scale, towards blue, okay? It's not going to make everything blue because everything's moving proportional along the scale to whatever color it started at. We can use this to adjust things most of the time, you probably won't use this on the whole image itself, but you might use it for things like, let's say you want to just change I mean, it's gonna be pretty rough, but let's say you wanted to just change the eye, okay? You could make sure that you're on a separate layer, okay? Right now, all this is merged down into one final image, but let's say I just wanted to select the eye. I could come to Hue, Saturation, Slider, and change that independently of the rest of the image, okay? You could see it worked out okay. So next, on that list, let's go back to our menu. We have the Hue, Saturation, Slider. We also have the saturation slider okay so this one is going to the first one changes the hue this one changes the saturation saturation is how bright and how much color there actually is in your image so if you bring it down really low all the way it's going to make it black and white and if you bring it up all the way to the top it's going to be as saturated as possible once again you'll probably use this more with selections than you will with just going all out but it is an important tool to use now let's say you want the focus to be more on the face right well what you can do we're gonna duplicate this layer. So now we have two of the same image, okay? And this top one, what we're gonna do, we can make the saturation on it really bright, okay? But let's say we don't want the whole image to be that bright, we just want to focus on the face. Well, now on this top layer that we've saturated, we can get our eraser tool, make sure we have something with a really soft edge, and go ahead and erase everything else that's more in the background and over here on the clothes, while leaving pretty much just the face. Okay, and it will leave that looking saturated with everything else being a little bit more subdued, helping it become a better focal point. Okay, so that's one option. Or if you want something to be same desaturated, you could do the same thing. Okay, then the last one is our brightness. Okay, so the more we bring this up, the brighter the image is gonna be, and the farther we take it down, the darker it's gonna be all the way till we get to black or white. And we can use all the same tools with the selection tool that we did before with the same thing. Okay, these buttons on here on the left, these are just, if you wanna reset, it'll bring your image back. If you wanna preview it, you can hold that down and it will show you what it looked like before and after. And then undo is just undo and redo. Let's go on to the next one, color balance, okay? So click on color balance. It's gonna bring up these three sliders, okay? Now, first off on the right here, it shows shadows, midtones, and highlights. Okay, when we click on those, it doesn't appear to do anything, but that's because it's just telling us what's being selected. Okay, so if we do highlights and then we come over here to our color sliders, we can adjust what color the highlights are by adjusting the color balance. So we bring it up more towards the cyan side and then the green, we can adjust that as well if we want it to feel really blue and cool. Okay, most of the time you're gonna keep these adjustments really subtle. They're just gonna be really small shifts in order to balance out the color. That's why it's called color balance, okay? So let's say we reset that. Maybe we wanna do the midtones, right? We want the midtones, we want her skin to feel a little bit more green. We want the whole image overall to be a little bit greener, okay? Then we want the highlights to be a little warmer. So we bring those over towards the warm side of things more, okay? And then you can see, if we preview it, can see what the original looks like versus our color adjusted one. And then the shadows, let's say we want the shadows to be red, okay? We really want the shadows to be pushed dark, all right? You can adjust that as well. And you can get some pretty cool filter looking effects with this, so keep that in mind. You don't wanna go overboard, right? I would say this is too much, right? I'm just kind of exaggerating it so you could see. But most of the time when you're doing this, it's gonna be really subtle, right? Like barely moving it over a few notches. Okay, and you wanna think about these sliders, 
with the yellow to blue and magenta to green and cyan to red, you want to think about these as think of it on terms of cool versus warm. That's going to help break it down a lot easier. So cyan is cool, red is warm, magenta is warm, green is cool, and yellow is warm and blue is cool. And you want to think about that when you're adjusting these to figure out what it is that you're looking for. So that's it for that one. Let's move on. We'll reset that and move on to the next one, which is going to be curves. And curves here is going to help adjust how bright or how dark, how bright your lights are and how dark your darks are. Okay. So right now we're on composite, which is focusing on the overall lighting and composition of it. If I bring this down, this top right corner is going to be your brightest values while this bottom left one is going to be your darkest values. So if I slide the bottom left up, it's going to make everything dark get lighter and lighter and lighter until I bring it all the way up and everything's just going to be white. Okay. And then if I do the same thing with this one, it's going to, and I bring it lower, which is my light value, it's going to make everything darker and darker and darker until everything's black. Okay. Now, doing the opposite direction, it'll just begin to lighten everything up. Okay. Going by colors instead of values. So we'll start on the warm side of things and make those brighter until it gets to the cool side of things. And then vice versa for this one, if we bring it this way, I'll start with the cool side and make them darker and leave the lightest values last. Or the, sorry, the, uh, the warmest hues last, okay? So a useful thing you can use this for is if you want to just lower the contrast in your whole image, since Procreate doesn't have a contrast slider, what you can do is bring this up a little bit and bring that down a little bit. And then go back into your hue saturation and brightness, bring the saturation back up, bring the darkness down and all it does is decrease the contrast, okay? So you can see what it looked like before. Actually, let's just do this. Delete that again. We're gonna duplicate this layer so we have two of them just so you can see. And this top one, we'll go ahead and do that again. So we come to curves, we're gonna bring down the brightness, bring up the darkness. So we're decreasing that contrast. We're decreasing the distance between the highest and the lowest value. Then we're coming over to hue, saturation, and brightness. We're gonna darken the whole image, up the saturation a little bit more. And that just makes it so there's less contrast in everything. Brings everything a little bit closer together. Okay, which can be useful sometimes. Then we have over here red, green, and blue. Okay, so this is going to adjust the reds. Okay, similar to color balance, but you have a little bit more of a manual control over it. Same with green, all of these, right? You can adjust them individually. Now. Something else you can do is you can create a new point anywhere on this map. So let's go back to composite. Let's say we want our highlights to be darker and our our shadows to be a little bit lighter, but we want our midtones to also be a little bit lighter. You can create a new point anywhere on this curve and adjust it how you want. Okay. So maybe you want to do some sort of weird inverted thing where your shadows are really bright and your midtones are actually darker than the shadows, you can do that. It's kind of weird, but it's possible. You can create as many points along this graph as you want and really skew things or amp up the contrast in certain parts, okay? And if you want to delete it, you just tap on it and delete that point. Another thing you can do is if you completely reverse these, you'll just invert the whole image, okay? So that's it for that one. The last one is gonna be recolor. Probably not really gonna use this one a whole lot. I rarely use it. Okay, you can select a color and then adjust the flood of that color throughout the rest of the image, right? And it's gonna do it based off of whatever your color picker is up here. So let's say this is on red, okay? And then we do recolor and we select this pixel right here. It's going to take that pixel and anything that's that color is going to be adjusted by whatever value we selected, which for some reason went back to blue. There we go. It's gonna be adjusted by that. And the more we slide that, the more it's going to flood to nearby values, right? The lower this is, the more it's gonna to stick to whatever it's closest to in hue and value, okay? It's a pretty, I mean, I don't use it hardly ever just because it's kind of rough and uh, you have to have really clean values for it to really work well in my experience, but there it is. So that's it for our adjustment settings and I'll see you guys in the next lecture.